All right, so we'll just talk briefly here. All right. All right, so why are we, this unit is cells, why are we going to start, though, in talking about microscopes? Oh, raise your hand, please. Anna? What's that? Yeah, because cells are pretty much all microscopic. They are all um, too small to be seen with the naked eye, so we use a microscope, a tool, to allow us to see those very small objects. Um, and so, you know, you have a picture, this is an older style of microscope, you know, probably from like the middle of the 1800s or so. This is a modern microscope. These are the kind we'll be using. Um, and so, if um, cells I mean, were discovered and um, microscopes were started to use in, you know, the, the 16, 1700s, what had to be sort of refined or worked out before scientists could actually make working microscopes. What is the key thing that was needed? Nick? Magnification. Yeah, but how, and how do they get that magnification? By taking like lenses and stumbling. Yeah, it's the development of methods for making a lens. A lens is just a piece of glass that's shaped in a certain way that will allow light to be magnified. And that's where microscopes and telescopes develop from, those simple lenses that were developed. We need to talk about three types of microscopes. And um, we'll use two out of the three in class, um, but we'll talk about all of them. The first one is the one we're going to use most commonly. It's like the one I have up here. This is called a compound light microscope. Okay, and a compound light microscope like this. It has um, several lenses that you can switch between. And when you're using this microscope, our microscopes will give us a magnification from 40 at the low end, when we have it on low power, up to 400 when we have it on high power. There are other compound microscopes that could go up to 1,000. But generally, they require, they're called oil immersion microscopes. So you need to put some oil on your slide. And it's just a little bit more complicated. But our, our microscopes that we use will magnify the image up to 400 times. What that means is what you see in the microscope is 400 times larger than it is in real life. Okay? So you're increasing the size, the apparent size of that object 400 times. Another type of microscope that we'll use is called a dissecting microscope. It is not able to magnify as much. Okay? It goes from 10 to 40x. But it has some other benefits. What do you notice when you look at this microscope here? Joseph? Instead of just one eye, you can see both. Things. Yeah, it's two eyepieces. And that's a very important difference. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about that in the next slide about how that's different. All right, and then the third type of microscope is one we don't have here at school. Um, it's not commonly found in schools. It might be found in universities or in some research settings or maybe some hospitals. And this one is called an electron microscope. And rather than making an image using light, an electron microscope uses a very narrow beam of electrons, tiny little negatively charged particles to make the image. And that allows it to reach a very high level of magnification, up to and even greater than a million times. So with a, an electron microscope, you can see the very smallest parts of cells. It has a great level of magnification. It looks more like a computer than it does um, an actual microscope, okay, because it needs complex electrons to control the beam of electrons and so forth. Um, but that's a uh, that's an electron microscope. I'll show you some images from electron microscopes, but we won't get a chance to use it. All right, let's look at a couple images here from microscopes. 
Let's look at, these are some images uh, that were taken using the compound microscope. Okay. Um, so here we have some single-celled living things. This is an amoeba, a single-celled organism. It's alive, but it's just made of one cell. You would find it in a stream outside your house or a pond around here. If you took a sample of that water and looked at it under the microscope, you'd probably find some amoeba. You'd also find some paramecia, another single-celled creature, or maybe some euglena, another one. These are all living things. They're just made of a single cell. You can't see. If you look in the water, you wouldn't see anything. When you look at it through the microscope, you'd be able to see. No. Well, some. Amoeba can cause dysentery, amoeba dysentery, I guess not really. So, but there's lots of types of amoeba and so forth. Here's some other ones. This is Vorticella, or Radiolarins, or Forminiferans. These are some that excrete a shell um, on the outside made of calcium or other material. So those are some images with the compound microscope. We look at some images taken with the dissecting microscope, things look a little different. Here is an aphid, a tiny little insect that's a pest of many common garden plants, flower. This is a planaria, it's a flatworm. We'll be looking at those later in the year. This is a seed just starting to germinate or break out of its, um, out of its shell. So these images, how do they look different from the compound microscope images? Joseph? They look more clear. Clear, OK. What were we going to say, Anna? Bigger. Bigger. They're actually not magnified as much. Joseph? Compared to all the like, living creatures. A lot. Well, they are. But the image itself. The dissecting microscope gives us a much more three-dimensional image of the object. Okay, the compound microscope gives you a very flat image. You don't see the depth there. But with these compound microscopes, you can see the depth. You can see sort of how this is arranged. You can see the shadows and so forth. The dissecting microscopes allow you to see three-dimensionally, whereas the compound microscope does not. And it has to do with the eyepieces. Just have good depth perception. You need two eyes that are both facing forward. If you ever um, were playing a sport or something and um, you know you lost the contact or you had to have one eye closed or something, it's very hard, especially sports involve catching and throwing and stuff, because when you close one eye, you lose a lot of your sense of depth perception. Okay? Try it sometime. Go play catch with somebody and close one eye. Go play lacrosse or, or kick the soccer ball. It's very, very difficult. Okay? So the bot the Dissecting microscope has those two eyepieces, allows you both eyes to get a good sense of depth. 